It's the Full Force News Burst Extra, brought to you by GeneralsJoesReborn.com, with me, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic80. With a number of new name only reveals emerging over the past few weeks, it's time to deep dive on an exciting figure and animal companion, so let's talk classified Norgahide. Alright then, let's get into another name only reveal that came out of PulseCon a few months back now. It's the Dreadnought's very own poacher with questionable personal hygiene habits, Norgahide. Now, it hasn't been officially stated anywhere yet, but this will be a figure and pet set with his trusty wild boar, sometimes allegedly referred to as Clyde, which just so happens to be his name as well, but we will get into that. So, this character was introduced into the line in 1989 as an action figure and as a very prominent character in the animated Deke cartoon series. He showed up in the very first episode, part one of the Operation Dragonfire miniseries and became a staple villain operating as a fairly high-ranking Cobra alongside the command structure. I know, so weird. Now, other than the mention of Africa in his original file card, his birthplace is unknown, so of course they made him Australian in the cartoon, voiced by Ian James Corlett. He didn't make any appearances in the original Marvel A Real American Hero comic run, but did show up occasionally in other iterations of the comics, including the G.I. Joe Frontline comics, and most notably, the final issue, which saw the Dreadnoughts sent in to eradicate any existence of the Crimson Twins television network, which acted as a front for other nefarious schemes. Norgahide utilises a method from his file card in attacking Roadblock, who happens to be filming a cooking show at the same time. Now, in the original figure file card, it states that Norgahide likes to grease himself in rancid hog fat to help disguise his human odour when hunting, and that's what he does in this short story. It was a fun homage, also full of other puns like, I'm gonna poach your eyes, Joe, and you'll make a fine trophy, just before Roadblock knocked him out with his own branded Marvin Hinton grill. So coming to the figure, I first saw this one on the peg during that first trip to the USA. Yep, it's one of those stories again. The first thing I noticed was the Dreadnoughts logo on the card. I got immediately excited having quite the fondness for the Biker Gang sub Team. As a kid, I did miss out on Ripper and Torch, but I'd be damned if any of the others got away from me. Monkey Wrench, Road Pig, Thrasher, and the Thunder Machine, Zanzibar and his air skiff. I was clearly overcompensating for missing out on some of the OGs. So you could imagine my excitement at seeing another character to add to this ridiculous team. What really drew me in was the card art though. Even if most of it was concealed by the bubble, wait. He has a wild boar as an animal companion? If I wasn't sold before, that would definitely push me over the edge. He was already in my shopping cart before I noticed that. The figure is just packed full of character and personality. It's not a very nice personality, but you get what I mean. The huge handlebar moustache, the G.I. Joe logo tattoo with a cross through it, the animal print vest and outlandish necklace with various animal teeth and victim's dog tags, major blood style. The loadout was also really interesting, a wrist machete, knife that sheaths into the shin albeit very awkwardly, a bow, a quiver, removable hat, rifle with bipod. Wait, his wild boar has a mohawk? Yep, I continue to be surprised by the absolute awesome that was Norgahide, and almost still find myself noticing things about that figure years later. The detail in the sculpt is phenomenal, and that head is just crazy. He's a perfect fit for the Nox, and I have to say I was on board with the direction they were going in adding pirates and poachers and so on to the gang. It just made sense in my head. He's recently been showing up for Hasbro events in two-up form as well. That particular version of the figure does hint at the fact that some of the deco was costed out on the hat and armband. It also was not clear to me at the time that his right boot is wrapped in a bullet belt. I only realised after seeing the two-up at Hascon back in 2017. The UK and Europe got Norgahide in 1991, and funnily enough, they changed aspects of the file card that I wasn't expecting. The first glaring omission is that he's in no way associated with the Dreadnoughts. No logo on the front of the card, and they even changed one of the best parts in the file card to continue that disassociation. The US card reads, He was subsisting on his earnings as a freelance fur stealer when he was recruited by the Dreadnoughts at an all-night donut and grape soda shop. 
shop, but the UK version says he was subsisting on his earnings as a freelance first dealer when he was recruited by Cobra at an all-night cafe. This is interesting, especially since he doesn't really show any affiliation to the Knox in the cartoon, which had been in syndication in the US since 1989 and could be the reason for them not making a song and dance about it on the card. Even so, we didn't get the new cartoon out here at any point, so I'm not sure why it was done. I suppose it kept the card backs very uniform and might have been easier for the production process. The other change was a simple grammatical switch between bathe and bath, because in British English, bath is also a verb, one baths. For Brits, to bathe means to swim or to pour liquid onto something. Yeah, I know, seems like a lot just to change that one word, but I don't make the rules here. File card discrepancies out of the way, this figure is brilliant and also got a release in China in 1993. However, we didn't see much use for it following that except for Zangief in the Street Fighter 2 line the same year, where the torso and arms were reused and a rather fun combo of those homages in 2004 for the Joe Con Dreadnought Rampage Escapades in the Everglades box set. The Crusher figure utilised the head sculpt from Zangief and the entire body and accessories including the wild boar from Norgahide and gave him a fun backstory in the file card. What was also fun was the fact they name dropped the Nox Poacher saying the other Dreadnoks are still wondering what happened to Dreadnok Agent Norgahide after he mysteriously vanished from an overnight hunting expedition with Dreadnok Crusher. Yeah, and then stole all his clothes and his blooming pet. This was also referenced in the Devil's Due comics Threat Index edition to the back of the comic as it states Norgahide's threat as unknown. The club utilised the original head sculpt for another new character of their own creation in 2005, General Mayhem in the Mars Invades box set, but yeah, not a huge amount of use for the vintage mould there. We wouldn't see another Norgahide figure until Clyde Nor Hyde in 2011 for the 30th anniversary Dreadnought Battle Set 7 pack. The name change seemed to be due to the American artificial leather brand of a similar name and an avoidance of any legal issues. In any case, we got an actual name for the character for the first time. Unfortunately, his board didn't join him and now we wait for Clyde's first appearance since 1989, unless you count his reuse for Crusher. Now I've been using the name Clyde for the boar for most of this episode, but we should really talk about that. So it would seem as though the name only came about on the Wikipedia page for Norgahide back in 2010. Following that, the first use of Clyde officially was for the 2011 figure, not actually the boar, who of course did not come with the modern 4-inch figure anyway. Then we see the wiki entry used almost word for word on the G.I. Joe Battlegrounds Norgahide and Norgahide and Clyde cards created for the game in 2014. Following that, Tom Scioli used Clyde as a name for the boar in the second volume of Transformers vs. G.I. Joe comics in 2015. This was the solidification of the name going forward now that it had been used in three separate official capacities. Not the most conventional way to name a character but definitely an interesting story nonetheless. But will the boar be called Clyde in the Classified series though? That is the million dollar question and that brings us to the Classified figure. So, it's pretty obvious we are looking at the figure in a very minimal capacity on Metalhead's box art, standing on the train and waving his hat in the air from the Deke episode Granny Dearest. No sign of Clyde here, but that would be a bit harsh to drag your pet boar onto the roof of a speeding bullet train. I digress, I fully expect to see a design very close to the original one and I truly hope they go all out with the animal print deco and add the pattern to the hat band and the arm strap. I feel like he needs the crossed out Joe logo tattoo and maybe some other cool additions to his exposed body parts. Easy. More tattoos I mean. A knife sheath on his lower back on the vest would be cool, but I could see them doing something more practical and having it on the back of his belt at the same horizontal angle. I doubt they'll do the shin knife and instead just have it on the side of his boot to avoid the awkward position that the vintage figure struggled with. I do hope they give him all of the original weapons and accessories though. The bow and quiver already exist in the line, but a more specifically vintage styled quiver backpack would be cool. I would also like to see that weird wrist machete, but failing that, the regular machete we already have and a thigh sheath would suffice and that would give him three bladed weapons in total counting the knife on his back and shin. A poacher can never have enough knives obviously. There are plenty of rifles he can use but I would like a new more vintage style version with that bipod and it would be cool if they give him a rifle bag to carry it but that might be a touch excessive. Low lights might be an option but doesn't give off the same vibe as the original rifle. The removable hat is a no-brainer and looks to have been revealed in an eBay lot very recently. 
plus we've sort of seen it in action on that metalhead box art. I'm expecting a secondary vest over an already naked body that's been used in the line before, this makes the most sense in the reuse department. I'd also want the necklace of teeth and dog tags to be removable, but I could also see that connected to the vest as one piece as well. I think the head sculpt will be outstanding and can't wait to see how they tackle the handlebar moustache. I really hope they keep that aspect as well as a really mean and gnarly facial expression. I'm super excited for this figure but way more excited for the boar. The way they've approached the animal companions so far has been perfect. Fiona, Timber, Junkyard, they're just so good. I just hope the mohawk is in full effect. So yes, I'm extremely stoked they are doing these two lunatics and look forward to the eventual digital render very soon. Anyway, what do you guys think? Are you excited for Norgahide and Clyde in the classified series? Do you call the boar Clyde, Porky or Pumba? Let me know in the comments below. Okay team, lots more content to come so keep it locked, stay fresh cheese bags and as always, full force. That's it for this instalment of the Full Force News Burst Extra. Thank you for watching, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. See you next time and as always, Full Force. Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on X, formerly Twitter, at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Full Force. We've also added a brand new Instagram so check us out there as well at The Full Force Podcast and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on any of those platforms with feedback and questions. We also have a Patreon page so if you want to show your support for the show, see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click on the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force